Welcome to Subramani. Uh, continuing my cognitive biases and uh, uh, in part of behavioral finance, there is one thing called the uh, social desirability bias, right? This is a bias which uh, we have seen, uh, but we don't really, uh, we can't really quantify the impact of this on the uh, answers that you give. Uh, typically, you have attended a session of mine where I say that equities are the best and blah, blah, blah and all that. And then the person who has organized the event comes and asks you a, gives you a questionnaire, uh, which has a little bit of risk profiling also. So, chances are you will, uh, you will want to say that you are more interested in equity or you are equity biased. Also, there is a young boy or girl sitting in front of you, you are 50 years of age. Uh, 55 years of age let's say and that boy or girl is asking you how much in equity now you want to look good you don't want to disappoint that boy or girl and everybody in India uh, at least the people I have met think it is uh, very sexy to say uh, higher percentage in equity than in debt most people I mean there are people I have friends who would say more debt than equity which may or may not be appropriate for them but typically this social uh, uh, social desirability bias is uh, wondering how to impress the questioner uh, and uh, making sure that the questioner is happy uh, and not necessarily the truth. So, uh, typically it is defined by Investopedia as a bias which is a social science research uh, t a term that describes the tendency of survey respondents to answer questions in a manner that will be viewed favorably by others. What others think of my answer? I mean, this is going into some place where they are going to assess your risk uh, profile. But you are still worried or you are obsessed about what others will think that you can't, uh, you can't remove it from anybody's head. It can take the form of over-reporting good behavior and uh, under-reporting bad or undesirable behavior. We see this even when people uh, report their eating and exercising habits. They over uh, emphasize on their exercise and they under emphasize uh, their uh, uh, eating. So, somebody will say, oh, I spent two hours in the gym. It doesn't mean anything. It means they go, they meet people, they chat socially. It is nice to be uh, visible there <clears throat> and you also do some work. But if you actually put a uh, camera to see what they are doing, they may be doing a 40 minute workout in uh, 2 hours, right? So, it, but while reporting they say oh, 2 hours in the gym and while reporting they would also say that they eat healthy food, right? Uh, but uh, it may not be that they are not eating healthy food, but healthy food could be over and above what they are eating unhealthy food also, right? So, maybe I eat one samosa a week where actually it may be 2 samosas uh, a week or uh, two, 1 samosa every 2-3 days. This happens especially for people who eat in public places where you are sitting in an office and 4 o'clock in the evening somebody comes and puts a samosa plate and uh, tea in front of you. Maybe you didn't want it, maybe you wanted only half a samosa but the person leaves uh, two samosas and then you end up finishing it because you have been told that uh, oh you cannot throw things away for whatever reasons. Socially desirable behavior is something which we all are uh, victims of. The tendency poses a serious problem while conducting research, which is absolutely true, uh, especially with self-reports, uh, uh, I mean the questionnaires uh, and how that, that's how people fill up. The bias uh, interferes with the interpretation of average tendencies as well as individual differences. The questions have to be very sharp and perfectly asked, right? So, don't ask a person, do you think you are middle class? Best is to ask what brand of car, how often you change cars, what is the size of your fridge, what is your monthly electricity bill, give a range. Because somebody who is running up a 15-17,000 rupee per month electricity bill is not really running it up on fans and lights. You can make an assumption that 3, 4 ACs are there and they are active. Uh, the washing machine is working more regularly, maybe they have a toaster, any of those things which immediately increase the temperature or decrease the temperature, those are the ones which are big on electricity. So, you know how much a toaster can be used in a day, but you also know that uh, some AC in the front room or somewhere can be left uh, on uh, 
uh, right so the people will not come out with the truth about oh we switch off the ac fantastic but why is your bill 17000 on an average and 24000 rupees in the month of may right so these are questions which you have to ask in your head when you ask them simple questions everybody thinks in india that they are middle class right so the question is uh, typically what is an example of a social really desirable price so typically when you ask questions on a facebook group do you think people ever come out with the truth the answer is no the oh everything is normal with me i know people who say oh everything is normal at my age you expect me to have bp and sugar what is your age 57 not necessary not every 57 year old has to have bp or sugar but people don't like to uh, even reveal their illnesses in a questionnaire so uh, typically a facebook group or a twitter or everywhere people want to look good rather than be truthful on a particular pri- product which they use uh, the comments that they make right everything is uh, they worried about what others think so how can you beat it um, in the one, i think the best way is uh, ask people in the one on one environment to, about their risk profiling and do risk profiling with two three people right two three people means two three people separately asking the family members uh put a similar age person uh, for a 50 year old don't put a 22 year old for a 22 year old for a 22 year old you can still put a 50 year old who can be asked to look for biases body language etc but the 22 year old may not be trained well enough to find out the body language stuff right so anyway uh, we are a youth obsessed world so it is only the younger people who will be more likely doing this kind of work so uh, training them on body language and uh, asking them to put the other person at ease and doing this questionnaire uh, regularly over every uh, quarter every 3 months 4 months <coughs> will also help saying sir you said this but now that the market is down you're saying you want to be less in equity are you <coughs> is it really true that you want to be less in equity or do you and uh, repeat exactly what they say so when you say that then they say no 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 i didn't mean that and then when change Uh, accordingly right so and try to ask the question in as neutral the way as possible because in a neutral way they don't have to be uh, i mean there are people who come to my blog and say you may not be happy that i don't invest in equities boss be my guest to me it doesn't matter whether you invest in equities or whether you invest in that you invest what is appropriate for you not what matters to me how does it matter to me that you are xyz whose name also i don't know that you invest in equity or in that to me it doesn't really matter right don't try to impress me by uh, saying that i invest in equities it's your call if you don't know how to invest in equities you are much better off keeping your money in the state bank of india or an hdfc bank fixed deposit you are you are very unlikely to lose that but if you want to invest in equities please learn or invest in an index fund find an advisor all those options are there don't straight away go and uh, deal in uh, equities because it is easy to open an account right so what you do may not be so bad but what you say in the questionnaire could be bad and that uh, people doing the uh, census or asking for data should be able to find out thank you